We praise the Lord. Look at you. If you are there, your voice there, your heart there, your mind there, and you are there totally, entirely, and completely, I said, Praise the Lord. The Lord bless you today. The Lord turn your life around. And the Lord make his covenant to be effective in your life in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you today. You bring us to this day. Number one, it's the last final January covenant Sunday. Number two, it's uh, the uh, Sunday worship at the Alpha location of GCK, the gospel for every creature. We're praying, oh Lord, double blessing, double power, double possession. You grant to everyone in Jesus' name. And we pray, Lord, that your word will find a free course in every life and will bless every life. And the rain, the showers of blessing from heaven will come upon everyone without exception. Here and there, Alpha location and online, everywhere in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. A better amen. What's happening to your voice today? Amen. God bless you. You can see now we're coming to Isaiah chapter 42. And I'm reading to you from verse 5. Isaiah chapter 42. Reading from verse 5. Thus says the Lord God. He that created the heavens and stretched them out. He that spread forth the earth, and he which cometh, that which cometh out of the earth. It says, he giveth breath and unto his people upon it, and the spirit to them that walk therein. Look at verse 6. In verse 6 it says, the Lord have called thee in righteousness and will hold thine hand and will keep thee and give thee for a covenant of the people. It's talking to Christ, the Father, talking to his only begotten Son, still in heaven at that time he was going to send him to the earth and he says when he send him sends him to the earth he'll give him for a covenant of the people and for a light to the gentiles a light to all the kingdoms of the world a light to all the people of the world a light to all his creatures all the people that will come to that light and then he says in verse 7 in verse 7 he tells us he says is to open the blind eyes coming to you today and to bring out the prisoners from the prison and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. Then in verse 8, it tells us in verse 8, it says, I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to grieving, uh, to grieving images. Then verse 9, verse 9 tells us, Behold, the former things are come to pass, and new things do I declare. This day, new things. Yeah. And this week, new things. Yeah. And the rest of the year for our lives, from day to day, from time to time, from month to month, all throughout, the Almighty God in heaven has promised and declared, and He says, New things, new things for your soul, and new things for your spirit, and new things for your body, and new things for your family, and new things for your ministry, and new things for your profession, and new things in every area of your life. In Jesus' name, 
heaven has declared that God has declared that the Almighty has declared that and when God says this is what he will do that is what he will do and he says new things do I declare before they spring up even before you know them before you sense them before you taste them new things from the Lord the Lord will declare your life in Jesus name then he says I tell you of them as we come to these verses we're talking about experiencing daily benefits from the everlasting covenant a covenant that the Lord had made he thought about him for all eternity and now he has effected it through the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ and he didn't stop at that time on the day that Christ died on the cross it goes on and on because it is an everlasting covenant an endless covenant an eternal covenant the new covenant that he makes with his people through his only begotten son and he says because of that new things does he declare by the way what does that mean new things the people of Israel I see quite a lot of things under the ministry of Moses the people of Israel the children of Israel they would seen a lot of things under the ministry of Joshua and Elijah and Elisha and David and Isaiah and all the people the prophets of the Old Testament prophets that are major prophets and minor prophets those children of Israel they have seen quite a lot of things and now God said after all that you have seen after all that you have tasted after all that you have experienced now he says I do a new thing a new thing in your life a new thing in your family a new thing in your congregation and he says I declare it and this is the time for you to experience that experiencing daily benefits from the everlasting covenant we divide the message to three parts number one Christ the cornerstone of the everlasting covenant christ the cornerstone of the everlasting covenant number two is complete kill complete kill from the christ of the everlasting covenant when it says complete kill one it's entire it's total it's complete for your soul for your spirit for your body for your life, for everything that concerns you, he perfects everything. He gives a complete cure, complete cure from the Christ of the everlasting covenant. Number three is the consecration. How do we get into that? How do we experience? How do we have that? How do we possess that? How do we make sure that all the promises of God are fulfilled in our lives? How do you make sure that all the provision of Calvary Calvary is given unto you how can you be sure that throughout the year for the rest of your life you can have the provision and you can have the perfection the completeness of everything that Lord has provided for you we have to consecrate we have to trust we have to believe we have to have total faith implicit faith in the lord number three then is consecration and confidence in the everlasting covenant we're looking at number one number one is christ the cornerstone of the everlasting covenant look at isaiah chapter 28 and i'm reading from verse 16 isaiah chapter 28 we're looking at verse 16. It says in verse 16, Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion a foundation stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a precious cornerstone. And it says, A sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. That what cornerstone? Without that cornerstone, there's no salvation. And Christ is that cornerstone. And it says, I lay in Zion 
a cornerstone, a precious cornerstone. He that believes in him, he will not make haste. He will not haste away from the place of prayer. He will not run away from the place of preaching. He will not give any excuse if you really believe and if you know the completeness of your life, everything that he makes available is in the cornerstone. One, we have salvation and righteousness in the cornerstone salvation and righteousness that's why if you have not been saved whoever you are you come to that foundation you come to that sure foundation you come to that cornerstone and then you lay everything bare before the lord salvation and righteousness number two healing and recovery and the way of healing uh, is giving Christ for us. And by stripes, you are healed. There is healing uh, and there is total recovery. Whatever the challenge, whatever the ailment, whatever the plague, here is the cornerstone. The cornerstone for your healing uh, and for your recovery is the cornerstone uh, for your sanctification and holiness the lord knew that heaven is holy all the angels are holy and god himself is holy and thy holy child jesus and anyone that will get to heaven must have sanctification and holiness without without that sanctification follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the lord and he is the cornerstone for our sanctification as well as for our holiness and it is if we're going to get there eventually there must be steadfastness and you know christ is the cornerstone of our steadfastness and uh, resoluteness you are resolute and you say by all means that heaven i must get there and there's no other way to get there he is the way and he is the life and he is the one that leads us to that steadfastness as well as resoluteness he is the cornerstone of our sufficiency and readiness to get to heaven many times in the new testament christ himself said be ye ready be ye ready be ye ready and he christ in the sufficiency and our readiness is the one that gets us ready is the one that prepares us and he says he is the sure foundation he is the precious cornerstone and it is through that cornerstone standing on that cornerstone trusting in that cornerstone having faith in that cornerstone that you have salvation that you have healing that you have sanctification that you have the spirit baptism the spirit baptism it says you receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you but he said I as I go to heaven I will send uh, that spirit upon you he is the cornerstone anything we need everything we need as we approach God in prayer what plea do we have? What excuse do we have? And what good works do we bring? We bring Christ. Christ who is the sure foundation. And Christ who is the sure cornerstone. And as we come today, the Lord will fill your cup to overflowing in Jesus' name. And so he tells us that he is that cornerstone and we're looking at um, Isaiah chapter 7 and we're looking at verse 14 Isaiah tells us in different different ways that Christ is the cornerstone of the everlasting covenant that the Lord has made with us it tells us in Isaiah chapter 7 and in verse 14 it says therefore the Lord himself what others cannot do the lord himself there's no religion that can say but the lord himself and there is no office and there is no position in any office that can save but the lord himself shall give you a sign behold a virgin shall conceive the lord has to go through uh, through history and out, outside history 
outside science, outside everything that we know, because all the things we have known from history, all the things we have known from science could not give us the salvation that will lead us into heaven. And therefore, the Lord himself going beyond history and going beyond science and going beyond tradition, going beyond anything you have ever heard, everything you have ever known. He said, therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive. We have never heard about that until Christ came. Never. And what had existed before Christ was born and before Christ came through the virgin, all those things cannot save. Any man, any woman, any natural thing, any scientific thing, there is nothing that came before that virgin birth that could save. And so the Lord himself has to do that, has to give us this precious cornerstone. He has to give us this unheard of birth by a virgin before we can have that salvation. It says, therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name. Somebody there tell me. Emmanuel. And you know the fulfillment of that if you come to Matthew chapter 1 reading from verse 21. In Matthew chapter 1 reading from verse 21 it says, and she shall bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name Jesus for he shall save he shall set free, he shall make free, he shall transform, he shall save his people from their sins. It's only in Christ we find salvation. Only in Christ we find a perfect healing. Only in Christ we find sanctification and holiness. Only in Christ we find the power of the Holy Ghost, the Spirit baptism that brings revival. Revival in your soul, revival in your mind, revival in your life, revival in your local congregation, revival anywhere, everywhere. True revival that turns multitudes unto the Lord. It's only in Christ, the cornerstone, we have that, and she shall bring forth a son. Before that son came, the son of God, before that son came, Jesus Christ, before that son came, Emmanuel, all the things humanity was looking for, we couldn't get, but now Christ has come. Somebody there, I said, Christ has come and he has made available what we could not have before he came. And he said, we'll call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Look at verse 22 there. In verse 22, it says that now all this was done. The, co the conception by a virgin. All this was done. The birth of the very Son of God. All this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord, by, of the Lord by a prophet saying, look at verse 23 there, it says, Behold, a virgin will, shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Now we can have God as a father. We can be so intimate with him as a father because Christ had come, the only begotten son of God, so that he'll make those who are children of the devil and the sons of the devil and the daughters of the devil, he'll turn them around, convert their lives and become sons and daughters of the almighty God. And then all that God has will be made available to us. Emmanuel is coming. Come. 
and Emmanuel is here. And everything you need of the Heavenly Father, now is your time. He'll give all that to you in Jesus' name. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 22. Isaiah chapter 22, and I'm reading from verse 22. Isaiah chapter 22, and we're looking at verse 22. It says, and the key of the house of David will I lay upon his shoulder so he shall open and none shall shut. You didn't say a good amen to that one. He shall open. He has the key. The key to enter in all the sanctuary of God, in all the provision of God, the key that will make you enter into life, into eternal life, into abundant life, into everlasting life, into the very life of God. He's the one that opens the door. Before he came, the people could not have all the life, life abundant, life spiritual, life eternal, life everlasting, life of God in man. They couldn't have that. He is the cornerstone, the cornerstone of the everlasting covenant that brings us to that open door. And then he said, the thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I have come. Thank God he has come. To you there, he'll come today. To you there, he'll come today. And the blessings of God, abundant, overflowing, will come in in your life. And it says, when he opens, none can shut. And he that shut, and none can open. Look at that in Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3, we're looking at verse 7. In Revelation chapter 3, reading from verse 7, here he tells us, he says, and to the angel of the church in Philadelphia. It wasn't, it wasn't a message to an angel in heaven, an angel in Philadelphia. What does that mean? It's the minister in Philadelphia. Why do you call him an angel? Because the minister, the preacher, the pastor, the teacher, the evangelist, the apostle, the prophet should live a life like a shining angel. A life that has no spot, has no stain, has no sin, has no sinful habit, has not any stain or spot of this world. That's why he referred to that minister as an angel. And all of us who are ambassadors of Christ, all of us who carry Christ, and then we carry Christ to the rest of the world, that's the kind of life he wants us to live. A life without sin, without spot, without stain, a life that shines forth in the midst of the people or before the people. A mean minister, a pastor, a preacher, must be totally different in everything, outwardly, inwardly, publicly, privately, in his family, and in the church of the living God, he ought to live like an angel among men, that the people will see, and then they'll be able to say, the pastor lives like he preaches and then i want to be like that if the grace of god can come to our pastor to our leader can come to the ambassador of christ and he can live a spotless life like this like an angel if he can i can i can that grace of God will be abundant in every life in Jesus' name. Now to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write, These things saith he that is holy, that's Christ, and he that is true, that's Christ, and he that hath the key of David, that he that openeth and no man shutteth. He that openeth in any generation, he that openeth in any country, he that openeth anywhere, and no man in that community, and no man 
any other place can shut the door that is open. Then he said, he that shutteth and no man openeth. You have him as your savior. You have him as your deliverer. You have him as the cornerstone of your salvation, the cornerstone of your healing, the cornerstone of your sanctification, the cornerstone of your steadfastness, the cornerstone of the spirit baptism and the cornerstone of our sufficiency is sufficient for everything and God knew that that anything it will channel to anyone any part of the world he sent the cornerstone he sent Christ and will find him it'll be sufficient in your life in Jesus name Amen. somebody shall sufficient. sufficient no lack in your life no limitation in your life and the wide door is open to you and as we pray I hear you know some of our people say in the evening in the evening yes in the evening but even this afternoon the Lord will bring abundant blessing sufficient blessing internal blessing external blessing family blessing answers to prayer in your life in Jesus name he is here already Isaiah chapter 9 and I'm reading from verse 6 Isaiah chapter 9 we're reading from verse 6 it says unto us a child is born uh, have you ever thought of you know people saying unto us unto us and they never partake of that thing because everybody's business is nobody's business everybody's benefit is nobody's benefit when you say unto me a child is born if you were the only sinner in the world Christ would still have come if you were the only sick person in the world Christ would still have come unto me a child is born unto us yes unto me a son is given and the government shall be upon a shoulder you know you get out of self-management because now the government of your life the government of your pilgrimage and the government of or your activities the government of your life is now laid upon a shoulder and you are not walking about as somebody that doesn't have any control, any check and you have self-management that's what gets us into trouble but when you take the leadership of your life, the management of your life and the government of your life and you lay it on the shoulder of the Lord Jesus Christ, your life will be straightened out in Jesus name and then he tells us it says and his name shall be called wonderful, that wonder you'll experience today in Jesus name and counselor, counselor. And you know, there are people that say, I'm saved, I'm saved, I'm saved. And they do things that are dumb. And they do things that are destructive. And they do things that will put their lives in disarray. They say they have Christ as their Savior. They don't have him as counselor. They don't go to him and ask him, I'm thinking of this, I'm proposing this, I'm expecting this. Should I go that direction? What should I do? When you have Christ as your Savior, you have Christ as your, as your sanctifier. You have Christ as the baptizer in the Holy Ghost. And you have Christ as the king of your life, the Lord of your life. He counsels you, go this way, don't go that way. Talk this way, don't talk that way. I have this association, don't have that association. He's the one that counsels us. Why don't we just leave the verse in the Bible? And we don't bring the verse one life. And then it says the mighty God. God, the one who is mighty to heal, mighty to save, mighty to sanctify, and mighty to turn our lives around is the everlasting Father. He is the Prince of Peace. And so there will be peace in our heart. 
there will be peace in our soul there will be peace in our family there will be peace within our associates the people that associate with us but if the peace is not there do we then have the prince of peace if there's no peace in the soul there's no rest in the mind if we the heart is palpitating all the time and we don't have any peace within there what is the prince of peace when he is the prince of peace it will reign without a rival in your life Amen. Look at verse 7 here. Verse 7 says, And of the increase of his government and uh, of peace, there shall be no end. Upon uh, the throne of David and upon uh, his kingdom to order each, to order each, to order each. If somebody's life is disorderly, in shambles, he cannot even know when to pick this and when to pick that, when to go there and when to come here. How does he say it in Christ? When the Lord says that when Christ takes control, absolute control in our lives, that he will order our lives, he will order our families, he will order our local church, he will order his whole church, and he will order even the universe to establish it with justice, with judgment, with justice from henceforth, even forever. And the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Praise the Lord. The Lord will perform it in your life. Christ the King. Christ the cornerstone. He will fulfill everything in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. We're coming to point number two now. Point number two, complete kill from the Christ of the everlasting covenant. Now, Christ is not just for a covenant for Israel. If it was so, it would have been a limited thing. And that's why I said yesterday, some theologians, some preachers, they say the age of miracle is past. It's either they do not really delve into the word everlasting. Everlasting covenant. The covenant that kills, the covenant that heals, and the covenant that straightens us up is an everlasting covenant. And it didn't end the year Christ died and went to heaven. He didn't die and the covenant has not been suspended since the last apostle John went to heaven between 96 AD and 100 AD. It's still here. That covenant that saves, that covenant that heals, that covenant that sets us free from that time until this time, until it will come again. That covenant will remain. Somebody shout, Amen! Look at Isaiah chapter 42, and I'm reading from verse 6. It says, The Lord have called it says the lord i the lord have called thee in righteousness and will hold thine hand and will keep thee it will keep you i said they will keep you and then it says and give thee for a covenant give christ for a covenant of the people for a light to the Gentiles, a light to the Gentiles, a light to the Gentiles. You understand, most of the miracles of Christ, one was on earth, was among the Jews. He didn't travel out of Israel, except when he was a baby and carried him to Egypt. But all the rest, until he was crucified in Jerusalem, he was there with the Jews. And then uh, the apostles, the apostles, you know, they started in Jerusalem and then Judea and Samaria, almost a part of Israel. And they didn't go to the uttermost part of there, to the Gentiles, but now we have the Gentile world. And God said that he has given Christ, not just for a covenant to the Jews, a covenant to the Gentiles, every nation of the world. There were nations that didn't even hear about Christ, that didn't hear about the gospel, about the apostles, when the apostles were living and walking, and eventually they died. But now that the apostles have gone, and we are all here, all the 
creatures of the world. Everyone in the world. Now the gospel comes to us. The gospel of salvation now comes. And the gospel of healing now comes. And the gospel of deliverance now comes. Because now all the Gentiles in every nation. We can now have complete cure from that same Christ. The Christ of the everlasting covenant. Look at Isaiah chapter 33. And I'm reading from verse 22. Isaiah chapter 33. We're reading from verse 22. Here he tells us, For the Lord is our judge. The Lord is our lawgiver. The Lord is our king. He will save us. Amen. Amen. Salvation comes from our king. Salvation comes from Christ. And he is the very one that still operates and still gives out the covenant and the benefits of the covenant. Look at verse 24. In verse 24 it says, And the inhabitant shall not say, I am sick. Inhabitant of where? Of both the Jews and the Greeks, of the Gentiles, of the ones who have come to give light to, the one he came to give salvation to, and the ones he came to give forgiveness, freedom, and healing to. And he said, The inhabitants of the land, the inhabitants shall not say, I am sick. Why? The people that dwell therein shall be forgiven their iniquity. There is forgiveness and there is healing and the forgiveness will draw and pull the healing that's why it says the people who are forgiven their iniquity the people who are forgiven their transgression the people who are forgiven all the wrong things they have done as he gives them the forgiveness then the healing will follow the health will follow because the inhabitant shall not say I am sick are you sick I said, are you sick? It will remove every remnant of that sickness, disease that remain, even today, in Jesus' name. He tells us in Isaiah chapter 35, and I'm reading from verse 4. Isaiah chapter 35, reading from verse 4. It says, say to them that are of a fearful heart, say to them, He's talking to somebody. He said, go and say to them. He was talking to Isaiah. Say to them. He was talking to, you know, the apostles that came because they came to fulfill. Do you remember how John the Baptist fulfilled what Isaiah had uh, written? Say to them. And then all the people that follow Christ. All the people that believe in Christ. All the people that put their faith, their trust, their confidence in Christ. He told us, say to them, He has sent me to say something to you. Amen. Say to them. Say to them. Don't cover your mouth when you're saying it to them. Don't look down when you're saying it to them. Don't be afraid, fearful, and timid when you're saying it to them. Because what I come to say to you will be fulfilled in your life. It says, say to them of a fearful heart, be strong. Be strong. Fear not. Don't fear premature death. You will not die before your time. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. Even God with a recompense. He will come and save you. He will come and save you. If I'm talking to you, look at me. Are you there? Yes. Am I seeing you there? Yes. It says, your God will come and save you. Yes. Salvation available. Because Christ has died for us. And Christ has provided everything. Look at verse 5. In verse 5, he tells us, Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened. Yes. The ears of the deaf shall be unstopped and then in verse 6 it tells us in verse 6 then shall the lame man leap as an heart amen 
and the and the tongue of the dog shall sing for in the wilderness shall be water shall waters break out and streams in the desert and then in verse 7 it says in verse 7 it tells us and the parched ground shall become a pool and the thirsty land springs of water in the habitation of dragons where each lay shall be grass with reeds and rushes and then in verse 8 it says in verse 8 it says and an highway shall be there and a way and it shall be called the way of holiness somebody say amen. amen the way that leads to the heart of god is the way of holiness the way that leads to every provision of calvary through christ is the way of holiness and the way that leads to abundance and the way that leads to his sufficiency it says a way shall be there and i way it shall be called the way of Holiness, the unclean shall not pass over it. We have to drop all uncleanness at the gate, at the door, before we pursue that blessing of God upon our lives. And it says, it shall be for those, the wayfaring men, no fools shall not err therein. And then in verse 9, it says, in verse 9, no lion shall be there, nor any ravenous beast shall go upon uh, upon it up there on and shall not be found there the lions angry lions and furious lions and angry men and women holding malice and bearing grudge and he said they are not going to forgive that person until they die and then they go to the great beyond he says they'll not be found there and the people that choose evil or magic or sorcery to destroy other people's lives it says they shall not be there but the redeemed shall walk there and then in verse 10 in verse 10 it says and the ransomed of the lord shall return and shall come to zion with songs and everlasting joy upon their heads they shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing and suffering shall flee away yeah. and the people of God said yeah. Isaiah chapter 61 we're looking at verse 1 Isaiah chapter 61 and we're reading from verse 1 it tells us in uh, verse in verse 1 it tells us very clearly here and it says the spirit of the lord god is upon me think about this i say i prophesied about 700 800 years before christ was born and then the very words that christ will utter and the very words that christ will say to show Show why he came and to show the purpose of his coming I see and I wrote those words down it's like uh, well, there's some people who are called speech writer you are the one to deliver that speech you are the one the king is the one to deliver that speech but he's a speech writer and the speech writer writes everything for him and he writes this by inspiration and he writes it coming from the mind and the mouth of God and then he deposits sit there and then the king or the president or the governor or the ruler when he comes he doesn't have to labor to write that he picks that up and he is the one it was written for not i say not i say i see i wrote it as a speech writer at the prophet writing for christ when he will come and he says the spirit of the lord god is upon me he didn't say upon him because he was writing for the one that will say that he said the spirit of the lord god is upon me because
because the Lord has anointed me to preach the good tidings unto the, unto the meek. And he has sent me to bind up the broken hearted and to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Now let's see the king has now come. Christ has now come. And the speech writer has written that for him. Now we're looking at Luke chapter 4 and I'm reading from verse 18. Luke chapter 4 we're looking at verse 18. <clears throat> it says the spirit of the Lord is upon me. That's Christ. He's now reading what had been written concerning him. And he said, everything that is written concerning me shall be fulfilled, will be accomplished, will have an end. And here it is now, our Christ has come. Amen. Our Savior has come. Our healer has come. And what had been written concerning him, he now picks up and he says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Then he says, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel, the good tidings, the glad news, is giving, is giving me the responsibility of preaching or professing or performing the gospel to the poor and he has sent me to heal the broken hearted if you are broken hearted here today because your loved one is down your loved one is sick or your loved one has uh, deserted you and you are broken hearted he will heal your broken heart today in Jesus name and those uh, people your loved ones that have gone away the Lord will bring them back I said the Lord will bring you back I was telling you the other day okay it was at the ministers conference in the morning about the exploits and I told uh, ministers that uh, you know somebody came from England and he used my picture to you know bring uh, the crowd and so they had told me to attend uh, the program so I was there and the preacher evangelist preached and he gave the altar call and I wasn't I was just there to be part of the meeting to sit like you are sitting and to to hear what was going on and eventually after the minister finished preaching he announced to the people he didn't whisper to me I want to call you to pray for the people are you ready are you willing he didn't ask my permission he just announced to the people and he said I've done the preaching and pastor Kumoyi is uh, you know praying for the sick today I looked up it shocked me as it shocked everybody. You are the evangelist who came all the way from England. Why don't you do it yourself? But I had no choice. I stood up. You will stand up. Yeah. I got the microphone. You will get the microphone. Yeah. And the power of God will manifest through you in Jesus' name. Yeah. And then I preach. I preach. I preach. You will pray. Yeah. And you know, people think it's so humility will we'll say, and we prayed. How many of you prayed? You know, when Peter prayed, they recorded Peter prayed. And when John prayed, they recorded the John prayed. When Stephen prayed, they said Stephen prayed. When Philip prayed, they said Philip prayed. I, William, prayed. You, what's your name? You will pray. God will answer your prayer. And then many miracles, uh, you know, took place. That's not where I'm going. That's not where I'm going. And the man took pictures and took it back to England. And he showed the board of trustees of Elim Pentecostal Church. And he said, okay, write to that man. Let him come. And so I came. I taught them on the gifts of the Spirit. I taught them on the manifestation of the power of God. This is where I'm going now. Immediately after I finished, I was going like this. A minister came to see me because I spoke to the ministers on the uh, gifts of the spirit and the minister said can you pray for me? I said of course I can I said what's the item of prayer? He said pray for me that I'll get a good wife to marry and I looked at him he was 
maybe perhaps a little bit older than myself, I said, uh, even me here, coming from Africa, married, and you married at this age, he said, I got married. What happened? He said, to tell you, I'm broken hearted. I said, tell me. I said, I went to the hospital and every part of my body, my blood had been poisoned. There was no part of my body that was free. And then I brought the medical report to my wife and I said, honey, look at my condition. Ah, this is a dying man. And the woman packed her load and ran away broken hearted. Now he wants another wife. I said, you know, preacher, I don't believe in second wife, divorce, remarriage in England. I said, but I'll pray for you. That's your wife will come back. He said, no, 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 pastor. I know that woman. Once she made up her mind, she's not staying here again. You'll never see her. I said, I say, from the Lord that that woman will come back Amen. and so I said we're going to pray now the prayer we're going to pray is every poison in your blood the Lord will take it away yeah. and then you will go for another medical report and the new medical report will tell anyone that looks at that report that you are now a perfectly whole healthy man he said okay and then i didn't i didn't wait for his you know his affirmation because i already have the affirmation from heaven and so i said let us pray i said lord you know my fellow pastor here he has poison in his blood clear all the poison away make him whole and make him completely well and then i said amen because i couldn't wait for his amen he was broken hearted and you know broken hearted people say amen it will not carry weight so i said the amen that will carry weight for you for you today i say an amen for you that will carry weight in jesus name and so I said, now, don't argue, go to the hospital again and have a new medical report. And when you have that medical report, don't tell your wife anything has happened. Make a copy of that medical report and post it to your wife who has deserted you. And she, he did exactly that. And when the wife got the medical report, this one, okay. That one, okay. That one, yes. That one, yes. That one, all right. The wife said, the man is now well. And the reason I left and ran away is because the man was dying. But the man is now living. And so she packed all her load, everything, and came back. You didn't hear that one. And came back. How do I know? Because the church, the nomination, the whole of England, they invited me, invited me back the following year to come and continue what I was teaching them. And then I got there and I finished the first message the first day. And then as I came out, the man came and said, don't go, don't go. I have something to tell you. Do you remember me? I looked at him. I said, no, because I see everybody looks like they are the same to you when you are new in the place. He said, I am the pastor that came to you last year. And I told you to pray for me to have another wife. And you said, no, you are going to pray for me, for my wife to come back. And uh, now you told me to go and do a new medical test after your prayer. I did, and I had the pleasure of introducing to you. Here is the hospital. Man, madam, Mrs. Honey, darling, so and so. And they were brought together, and the broken heart was taken away. Amen. Now, if God could do that for them, far away, they were knowing me for the first time. You have known me for some time now, your broken heart will be healed. 
today whatever is the cause of that broken heart everything will vanish away in Jesus name he said the Lord has sent him to heal the broken heart and to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind and to set at liberty them that are Bruce, look at verse 21. In verse 21, it tells us here, it says, And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your eyes. Today is the day of fulfillment in your life. It will save you. It will set the captive free. It will heal the broken hearted. It will destroy every yoke of the devil in your life in Jesus' name. Amen for you. We're coming to number three now. Number three is consecration and confidence in the everlasting covenant. Consecration that we commit ourselves completely, totally, unreservedly unto the Lord now henceforth and until we see him face to face consecration and confidence in the everlasting covenant we're looking at isaiah chapter 42 and i'm reading here from verse 8 isaiah chapter 42 we're looking at verse 8 it says i am the lord that is my name and my glory will i not give to another neither my praise to graven images and then in verse 9 in verse 9 it says behold the former things are come to pass the former things are come to pass what does god mean by that what god meant is this is saint moses to the land of Egypt and he said let my son go Pharaoh said I don't know that kind of God for him there's no God for him there's no God that will demand that my slaves will be released and they will go he said Moses get out of my sight Aaron get out of there there is no power that can deliver these people but God had already said these people will go and you will go out of captivity and God said the former things already come to pass they are done and now those people you know the story when I see the blood I will pass over you they came out and as they were coming out there was the Red Sea before them and Pharaoh said uh -uh. I would attract them and I'm going to take them back into slavery and the children of Israel looked back and they saw all the army of the Egyptians and they saw mountains on this side on that side and they cried what shall we do we should have died in Egypt no you are not dying in Egypt and so Moses began to pray and God said Moses the solution is in your hand and you are telling me to bring a new solution stretch that rod the solution is in your hand you've heard of Christ you've heard of his promise and you know that this God cannot fail and then Moses stretched out the rod and the sea parted and they went over like you are going over my life this year is a life of going over your life this year is a life of going over pharaoh thought the army thought they trap you they pin you down you die here either you rush into the sea or you rush into the arms of the soldiers one way or the other they say you are gone and heaven says all your enemies are liars yeah. and so Moses stretched the rod and the sea parted and the children of Israel millions of them they, they, they went over the Red Sea oh and Pharaoh said I won't give up on them I must get them back 
<laughs> when you hear that, your enemy say, I won't give up on him. I'll trail him. I'll track him. And I will get him back. Then you're afraid. What are you afraid of? The water, the river that made a way for you and let you go. That same water, that same river will close up on them and not let them go. And so... The, the children of Israel passed over and they were singing on the other side. And then Pharaoh said, you know, when somebody is stubborn against God, he is stubborn against his own destiny. It's going to die right there in the watery grave. That they will not even give him stage burial. It's going to die right there. And they plunged into the sea and they were swallowed up gone gone they didn't go to god because he said i don't know that god he was fighting god he went to the other side that's what god was saying he said the former things what he had said before they are all come to pass jericho wall is come down already and goliath is destroyed already and sinacrib and his enemy they were destroyed already god says everything i said in the past is come to pass and now he says the next part of verse 9 he says new things do i declare before they spring forth i tell you of them i tell you of them where are you i tell you of them i say where are you i tell you of them new blessings are coming your way today new deliverance coming to your life today a new experience of salvation restoration and total deliverance coming upon your life today in jesus name isaiah chapter 43 in isaiah chapter 43 i'm reading from verse 19 it says behold i do a new thing behold i do a new thing and you know the things of the past the old thing the lord has affected them and they are done and he says now i do a new thing now it shall spring forth shall ye not know it that's a question for you shall ye not know it i will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert the lord is bringing new things upon your life yeah. isaiah chapter 62 and i'm reading from verse 2 isaiah chapter 62 and we're looking at verse 2 in verse 2 it says and the gentiles shall see thy righteousness and all kings thy glory and thou shalt be called by a new name by a new name you are no more sickler that's no more your name you are now brother sister healthy through and through healthy you are no more Mr. Sinner of the flesh, but now, Brother Sage, Amen. Sister Sage, Amen. a new thing that God does in the heart, in the mind, in the soul, a new thing that God does in your family. You are no more barren, you are now a mother. Amen. You are not a dry wood, my brother. Now, you have everything it takes and your own biological babies are coming to your family in Jesus name and it says the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness and all the kings shall see thy glory and thou shalt be called by a new name which the mouth of the Lord shall name Amen Isaiah chapter 66, we're reading from verse 22. Isaiah chapter 66, verse 22. For us, the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make. New heavens, new earth, which I will make, shall remain before me, says the Lord. So, shall your seed and your name remain 
new heavens new earth look at verse 23 in verse 23 and it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one sabbath to the other it says shall be up shall all flesh come to worship before me says the lord and what the lord has said you're ready a fulfillment of that and other people will still come and they'll worship before the lord you know he spoke about new heavens and the new earth now come to the new testament in second peter chapter 3 I'm reading there from verse 9. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering towards what? Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Look at verse 10. In verse 10, it says, In the day, of the Lord it says but the day of the Lord will come as it thief in the night it says in the which the heavens that the sky shall pass away with a great noise and the element shall melt with fervent heat and the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burnt up then in verse 11 it says in verse 11 seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved all the things people are running after amassing gathering or building up all these things shall be dissolved what manner of persons ought she to be in all holy conversation and godliness then in verse 12 it says in verse 12 looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of god it says wherein uh, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat verse 13 in verse 13 never Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth. That's what we read in Isaiah. He says, Behold, I make new heavens and the new earth. And now Peter is telling us, the apostle Peter telling us that this is about to be fulfilled. It says, because now nevertheless we, according to his promise, look for a new, new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. And then in verse 14, it says, therefore beloved, seeing that she look for such things, be diligent, that she may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless that day is about coming christ is about to come he wants us to be ready and remember he is the one that makes us ready by salvation he's the one that makes us ready by steadfastness he's the one that gets us ready by sanctification he's the one that gets us ready by spirit baptism he's the one that gets ready, us ready by the sufficiency that he provided on the cross of calvary and he now he says it's about to happen new heavens and a new earth and everything that needs to be renewed in our lives it says they are now available why don't you then say oh lord help me that my salvation will be firm and complete that my sanctification will be real and evident that the power of the holy ghost that will see me through it will be real in my life that you are not here to play the game of religion and to shake and to raise the hand and all that and while at this time we don't know when the rapture will take place we don't know when that new heavens and new earth will be a reality what if it comes today and you're still playing religious game what if it comes today and you're playing all your usual habitual game a religion why don't you say lord everything i need is provided salvation provided healing provided and deliverance provided holiness provided and good health perfect health provided 
provided, sanctification provided, and the strength of the Lord, the power of the Lord to live a righteous life without interruption. All that is provided. And then readiness, readiness for heaven, readiness for the new earth and the new heavens. Everything you need to get ready is provided. Why won't you say, oh Lord, I come before you and I open my heart before you. Anything that will hinder me, anything that will draw me back, when Christ will come, I throw them away. Lord, give me all that I need, the sufficiency of your grace so that I'll be ready on that day. You'll be ready. My brother there, you'll be ready. My sister there, you'll be ready. Son, daughter there, you'll be ready in Jesus' name. We're going to pray now. We're not, we're not demonstrating. We're not dramatizing. We're not, uh, you know, shadow boxing before the Lord. We came for something serious. And we came that we know a God is in heaven. And that God in heaven is looking at us. He wants to know whether we're really going to have what he has provided to make us ready for heaven let's rise up now and pray and talk to the Lord seriously with an open mind with a repentant mind and with a persistent a faith that will say Lord here am I do it for me he will do it for you in Jesus name open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer and tell the Lord you know that Christ is the cornerstone Christ is the sure foundation and you want that cornerstone to avail for you, for your salvation. There is no other name given among men whereby we must be saved. It's only the name of Jesus. If you go out here, you don't have an encounter with Jesus, how would you be born again? How will you be saved? Tell the Lord and say, Lord, here I am, I call upon you. I drop all my sins, I drop all my iniquity, I drop all my transgression, and everything that will pull me away from the King I drop them, you know what they are, private or public, common or uncommon, habitual or occasional, whatever it is, drop them here and say, Lord, I turn, Lord, I repent, Lord, I'm seeking your face. I don't want this sin to ruin me. I don't want the flesh to ruin me. I don't want all the works of the devil and uh, militating against my life to ruin me, Lord. I I open up my heart to you. I open my mind to you. I open up every recess of my life unto you. Forgive me and save me and let me have the assurance of that salvation. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord. Salvation is available. Christ has made it available. He'll give it to you right there as you sincerely, wholeheartedly call upon the name of the Lord and the Lord will do it the Lord will do it. He knows you are serious minded. He knows that you are, you are dedicated to him. He knows you want his glory. He knows you don't want to hinder yourself or hinder anyone else from repenting and believing in the Lord and having a no so salvation, a clear salvation, a definite salvation and evidential salvation that God will be able to tell you want the salvation that leads us, takes us to heaven and you're asking the Lord, he'll put your life he'll pardon your sin he'll set you free and he'll protect you and preserve you from all those sins of the past you need sanctification he is the cornerstone of our sanctification and holiness, on him we build the life of sanctification and we live the life of holiness it comes from him he demonstrates it to us he declares it to us and he lives that life before us and now he calls us and he wants to impart that new nature of sanctification new nature of holiness into every heart he knows blessed are the pure in heart because only the pure in heart shall save the Lord. And if we come here, we didn't get purity of heart. If we come here, we didn't get holiness of heart. We'll be of all men, of all women, the most miserable. But we're saying, oh Lord, give me that experience of sanctification that will lead me to heaven. 
give me that experience of holiness without which no man shall see the Lord and then he has the power of the Holy Ghost he says I truly baptize you with water unto repentance but there is one here greater higher my cheer than I am he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire he says tarry he says wait until the Spirit of God in the baptismal measure will come upon you for you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem in all Judea in Samaria unto the uttermost part of the earth are you just looking at me we don't get it by just looking we get it by praying we get it by laying everything on the altar and saying Lord here I am here I am anything I'm withholding anything I'm holding back from you anything I'm privately keeping for myself and keeping away from the Lord of glory Lord remind me and I bring everything on the altar and with that total complete entire consecration and with faith the faith that will not be denied the power of the Holy Ghost in the baptismal measure will come upon your life and then you'll find the grace of God sufficient for your life sufficient for your life sufficient for the race he has called you to run ask the Lord and he will do it and you know he provided for a kill a complete kill, our healing, our total healing. You know, he provided for our health, totally healthy, from the top of the head to the tip of the toe. He provided for our kill, for our healing. And by his stripes, we are healed. You can call upon the Lord and say, Lord, I know. You don't want me to remain sick, sickly, infirm weak feeble you want me to be strong you want me to be healthy and you want me to be free of every form of sickness every form of disease because everything had been laid on you and i lay my weakness i lay my feebleness i lay my sickness I lay my disease, I lay my deformity on Christ. He is the one. Yeah, you have to do that by yourself and by faith. That every weakness, every feebleness, and everything that is not of perfect health, have the pain here, have the pain over there have the injury internal over there, and you take everything. By your own faith, by your own confession, by your own confidence, by your own trust, you lay everything on Christ. And then he'll give you that complete kill. You want to totally consecrate yourself to the Lord. Lord, everything you give me, my voice, my hearing, my sight, my skill, my energy, my position everything you give me i'm going to use for the glory of your name because i know you're not going to share your glory with another man and lord i consecrate lord i sacrifice all to jesus i surrender all to him i freely give i will ever love and trust him Love and serve him. Love and obey him. All, 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 absolutely. I surrender unto him. And as we do that, then all of Calvary will avail for us. Every blessing, every promise, every pronouncement, every provision 
by Christ from Calvary will be given to us, laid to our record. Don't, dram don't dramatize before the Almighty God. It's not a playmate. It's God. It's Creator. He's the King of Kings. If you wouldn't dramatize foolishness before the President, before the Governor, you can't do that before the King of Kings. That solemnly, you lay everything at the altar of sacrifice for God's glory. If you happen to call yourself a minister, a pastor, a preacher, a bishop, and you play games and you are gambling before God, you don't belong to Him, whatever your position. You call yourself a worker in the church. And you come to gamble with your soul before the Lord at the time of prayer. You don't belong to God. You are not ready for the coming of the Lord. You want to lay everything, everything within, everything without, everything around. You want to lay everything in your possession at the altar of consecration before the Lord. And you are saying, Lord, here am I. Have me and everything I am, everything I have, I dedicate everything unto you. That is the attitude of somebody who is seeking after the Lord. Tell him, tell him. Turn away from evil and turn to the Lord with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. You belong to the Lord. Act that way. In Jesus' name we pray. And the sincere, consecrated, submissive children of God said, Amen. Amen. Let's pray together. Raise up your hand there. If you're sick, you can place your hand where you have that sickness. Because today the Lord had said, I will do a new thing. I will do a new thing. Shall ye not know it? Shall ye not experience it? Shall ye not have it? Shall ye not obtain it? Yes, you will. That's why we're praying now to a God in heaven who answers prayer. And he will answer your prayer as you pray, as you trust him, as you believe in him, as you consecrate and you manifest confidence in him. That answer will come to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. We thank you and we bless your name because you call us to a real, sensible, sober, serious consultation. And you said, as we believe in you, every promise you have made, you will fulfill in our lives. I pray, Lord, those who have confessed their sins, they are turned away from their sins. And they want to be free from every known sin. I pray, according to your promise, forgive them in Jesus' name and lord you don't only forgive you set us free free from all those chains and shackles of sin free from every bondage of sin and free from every captivity of sin set your people free in jesus name and Lord, any infirmity there, any sickness there, any kind of bondage, imprisonment there by the devil, break the yoke in every life. Destroy the works of the devil in every life. And Lord, I pray that whatever the name of the sickness and whatever the name of that disease, whether it's internal or it's external, or you call it incurable, or it says a long-standing sickness, oh Lord, by your mighty power, touch them now, heal them now, 
take it away in Jesus name and Lord will bring our hearts before you and we pray Lord that you will sanctify the saved one that you will purify the saved one that the depravity there and the inner corruption there that your grace that your goodness that your glory and that what Christ has done on the cross of Calvary will be effective in every heart and in every life sanctify your people in Jesus name and that holiness without which no man shall save the Lord so that will not just be religious people, church going people, denominational people, traditional people, or well, just theological people. Lord, we pray that that real sanctification that purifies the heart, that purges the heart, and makes us ready to see the Lord, the holy God, the pure God, the perfect God on that final day. Give that experience of sanctification to everyone in Jesus' name. I pray the power of the Holy Ghost that will make us go out and have revival anywhere and everywhere. Restoration of everything that people have lost everywhere and anywhere. And that will make us have everything that Calvary has provided. And then share that and give that to other people. That power. Holy Ghost power, that power, supernatural power, that power, irresistible power, that power, wonder working power, that power, mountain moving power, give to us in Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray with all that we have received of the goodness of God, of the grace of God, of the power of God, I pray you will preserve us in your blessing until the final day. Because the word of God says there will be the most miserable of men if only in this life we have the benefits from Christ as healing, as deliverance, as prosperity, as success, as triumph. If only in this life we have that and they were not with Christ in glory in heaven will be of all men the most miserable. Therefore, Lord, we're praying you'll prepare us for the day of rapture in Jesus' name. Prepare us for going to heaven in Jesus' name. And all the carelessness of our lives, all the superficiality of our lives, all the frivolity of our lives, all the carelessness in our lives, we pray you brush everything away, cleanse everything away, and make us sober-minded followers of Christ that will see him on that final day. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said, Thank you and God bless you.